Susie's work. Susie doesn't take herself seriously as an art quilter, but we do. I was a garment maker starting at about age 14 and then stopped sewing in about 1989. Didn't use a sewing machine, anything, until about 10 years later when I had my first grandchild. I discovered that I liked to go towards strip and string piecing. I wish I had those things to show you. As Beth had asked me to talk about or show the things I've done, I realized I've kept the things I either really liked or the things that mm, I wasn't willing to throw away, but they weren't so good. So I have quite a few things to show um, through this series that are things to not do. But this, of course, is the log cabin, which is the sim one of the simplest quilt patterns there is. And I just dearly love it because I can start with the middle and just keep working my way around. This one is about 12, 15 years old. And this is also partly to show, when you see some of my other things, you're gonna wonder if I know how to sew. So I'd like to also show, this of course is a pineapple quilt. And this is also about 15 years old and it's been hanging in the sun. I hadn't realized how much it had faded. But again, it's going round and round and round. I just love piecing. I call it P-E-A-C-I-N-G. So I do a lot of random piecing. I'm not interested in, oh, does this corner match this corner exactly? That sort of thing just doesn't interest me very much. So this shows that I can So I actually want like a second place with this quilt. As the years have gone by, I actually sold fabric for uh, about 15 years total. And I never wanted to sew with a group of fabrics that had been designed to go together. Um, when you do quite a bit of selling of that, it doesn't seem very interesting after a while, even though they always look beautiful. So I have gone towards scrappy things, a little thing that somebody gave me that I cut up into little squares and then just sewed around. Here's an example of one. I went to a retreat a couple weeks ago with a group of friends that um, we always bring our scraps to share and one woman had brought a whole bunch of um, children's prints and we just had a new nephew. So out of that bag I made this um, log cabin. Two other things about this is I've always struggled with having enough difference in my values, meaning dark with light. I, now it worked with this quilt to have them closer, but very often things are, the design is lost and it doesn't have any power when the fabrics that are together to make a design are the same value. You can't read them as being different. And I am always picking out things that it would be a nice skirt and blouse together, but in a quilt, it's boring to have them together. So I keep working at that. And this is, I think, a successful one at being using the really light colored scraps and the dark so that you could see the pattern. It's fun for me to keep myself limited to only the fabrics that are in that bag. I can't use anything else. That way i forced into creativity. For example, this binding, um, there was only a little bit of this, so I spaced it out that, that way, which I think makes it more interesting. Um, yeah. Being forced into finding something creative to solve your problem, to me, makes me do way more creative things. All right, I'll just quickly also show some more string piecing, but start out with this and then just use another strip and another strip and so on. Try to do pretty high contrast. I have discovered that I cannot cut lots of pieces in advance because then it gets boring. I have to cut them one by one 
so that they won't all be regular size. If you want to have variety, it's important to just cut as you go. This first one I'm going to show you is one that I have never really had the confidence to give to anybody. But if you look, I just started cutting and sewing together and it's important to me to follow the thing of just cutting with scissors and not measure so that you get a lot of variety in the sizes and the shapes. And uh, so I just kept sewing things together and then sewed those things together and then those things together till you get out to the size that you think, well, this is a good place to quit. And um, I do like to incorporate again. This is a, a tag because I think this fabric was a decorator fabric, so it said what one to order. I left that on there. Just another example of random piecing. This I've done quite a bit of. This again is pretty old of where I just piece stuff and then I cut them into six inch blocks. And the reason I choose six inch blocks is because that's how wide the ruler is and did use the rotary cutter for cutting these out. This was before I started using scissors primarily. This was made, most of these were made one day when I was left at a, in a trailer house, a camping trailer by myself with nothing to do all day with just a few fabrics and a little featherweight machine. So this is what came from it. A lot of them are raw edged, but again you can see that they aren't measured. And you know if you like to measure stuff that I'm not your cup of tea. But anyway they're just cut and uh, put together then in fours. It's like a four patch and um, of ones that I thought were alike and then ended up sewing them together. This is a tablecloth from Target on the back that I had used several times. I didn't realize that it still had a lot of yellow dye in it. So when I went to wash it, a lot of these fabrics had been white and they're now all yellowy. It's but cute I just decided, I use this as a tablecloth. It, it does not have any batting in it because I thought this had enough body on its own. So I really do like this. I was in a class and we were challenged to do this and then to cut it up more. But I like it so much this way, I just quit here. Uh, do notice that this shirt that I got, I use a lot of garments that I, well, from my own closet, but also from um, thrift shops. And this particular shirt I bought at a thrift shop and apparently was never worn because it still has the tag of remove before washing. It was the tag that, you know, if you were stealing it, it would have caught you at the door. Beth says she doesn't like that, but I think it's hilarious. Then the back of this is another one of those, you know, things that didn't quite work out. So you bring them together. You can see here is a pocket from a pair of something. But this was stuff that was hanging around in my sewing room. This, this was something with I tried to do I tried, I thought these went together so beautifully, and you see there's no value difference. They're just the same. It looked good to me when I was sewing them together, but it's not interesting now. This was, I just felt like yellow. So I sewed a bunch of yellow pieces together one evening. As I said, I piece for piecing, I, I, not knowing how I'd ever use them. And then several months later, um, Somebody challenged me to make something yellow and I already had all of this done. So I uh, did that together and then I, of course, purchased this at some point and never used it because it was too nice and decided that I need to get over that and put it on something and I think it probably really made the piece. This one, for some reason, maybe one of you can tell me, I think it's just too bright. Too much of the same value in it. But it works okay. It's just not a favorite of anybody. And for another challenge thing, leftovers from it, I quilted this, and I, I, I think this is the best quilting I've ever done. It's, it's of a river and uh, goes all over it. The problem is what I learned from this, see, I just wander quilt. You know, don't mark it with a 
piece of chalk or something you don't like how to use, just pull the thread out and go back and do it again. Um, but you can't see it on a pattern. So I learned about if you're going to do intricate quilting, do it where people can see it. Amen. <laughs> yeah. That was and, a lot of things, too. <laughs> yeah. This again was just, uh, oh, I'll just sew these strips together and cut them into six inch blocks. A friend had made a, uh, she's a, one of those quilters that does things the right way, and she had made some of these blocks that she gave me, like this one. Um, and they've been incorporated in this. Now this doesn't have very much contrast in it either, but it's not trying to say anything. So I think it's okay without that contrast. And I also think it's better for having something that you could put your eyes on, like these pieces. I hang quilts on the wall by my bed. And when I wake up in the morning, I learn a lot about what's interesting, what isn't. So I had this one up this summer, up in our cabin, and learned that I particularly like those blocks that Jeannie had made. This was another challenge in a class I was in. <sighs> You're supposed to sew these things, put stuff in them. Oh God, it was awful. So I ended up taking it all apart, took about half the blocks, threw them away, realized that this looked like um, poplars or aspen. It's a cartoon fabric, actually, a black and white cartoon fabric. But, um, and then went ahead and stitched the branches on it. And I trapuntoed these things here, these trunks, which at first were just pieces of fabric that were supposed to be inserted. And the wall that it's on is quite bright, so this, uh, it needed something more than just this. So I had made, and of course I ran out of this fabric, so I had to put that in the middle, but I made this as a background. See, there's a placket from a cuff in it. And um, on the right wall, this looks pretty cool. This summer I promised myself that I would finish all of my UFOs, and I did finish a lot of UFOs. What are UFOs? Uh, excuse me, unfinished objects. That's a very good question. Not everybody would know that. So I had a basket that I had thrown ones together that I thought went together and assembled them finally all together into this. So there's some things in here that are probably 12 years old as experiments, leftovers. And I like it. I call this one Frank's Old Clothes. It's my husband's father's clothing. I woke up one morning and I thought, I know how to do that. Because I'd watched enough demos that were kind of like this. So I just got a piece of batting, laid it on the table, sprayed it with 505, is that the call over that? And uh, started just cutting, I did use a uh, rotary cutter and a mat for this and just started this is a shirt these are of course are pants this is another shirt um, a jacket he had some pants that he had and I just started cutting them and placing them on and I had this done in about 20 minutes then I went to sewing it and um, just started sewing what seemed like a logical kind of way to do that that's gorgeous. I don't think I've seen that one. And I love this, the two-layeredness of it. This too just occurred to me. We've been in Hawaii. We live on a boat in Hawaii in the winter, so I'd watch the sunset a lot. And um, as I said, I've sold a lot of fabrics, so I know fabrics pretty well. There's not really quilt shops where we are in Hawaii, but there are uh, drapery shops and that kind of thing. So I just bought, went in and bought small pieces of a bunch of drapery fabrics and other things that had quite a bit of texture to them. I love texture. And uh, just started cutting and sewing, much like the process that I use on Frank's old clothes. And then when I hung it up, it seemed to be too bland to me. So I put, I had some um, linen, <laughs> not enough though that I put behind it, and then that seemed bland, so then I zigzagged over some pieces of thread that were quite heavy, 
then this, of course, is crushed velvet. And also, it still seemed like it needed a little more variety, so I went and bought some of the interfacing that we used to call horse hair interfacing, and went back in and, and uh, applicate some more of that in. But everything's raw and just sewn. And the reason that it's this size is the table in our boat is this size. This one has some really great stuff about it. And as I mentioned earlier, I have I struggle with um, value differences lots of times. And this shows it really well. This, of course, are jeans cut up. The fabrics are fabric by the yard. But some of these stand out beautifully. And in this light, a lot of them don't stand out beautifully. Where I usually have it hung, there's about half and half. This, for example, does not stand out from a distance. Um, well, you can see this doesn't because they're, they're just too close to the jean color. And uh, this one's a good one. This one's a good one. This is not a good one. And I just, I, when I was making this, I got hung up on using a lot of different fabrics that I liked without paying any attention to whether they contrasted with the jean fabric behind them and therefore are bland. I had three panels here and um, had incorporated, as you can see, a placket here, some more. I don't sew these buttons on. I, I leave them on the shirt as I cut it up. And I kept doing the third one over and over and over again. I spent more time on that third panel than all the rest of it put together and finally realized to cut it off. So that's what I did with that. It's the other half of the placket. Oh yes, okay, there's the button, yeah, so that way we can <laughs> button them up and keep them together. Uh, this is a shirt with uh, an interesting front in a Hawaiian shirt. Since we spend, see I try to keep that stuff in there if I possibly can, there's some buttonholes. This one I like, it's a garment with um, little frogs, but not enough contrast. It's still fun on the right thing, but it doesn't really show up like I thought it would. This one also uh, has been a disappointment to me. Um, it's three, I don't remember, this was a skirt and these were two shirts, I think. Yeah, here's the front of that shirt. Um, I thought it'd be really cool and then I, I didn't like it, so I went in and I did this fancy quilting on it with my long arm machine. And I don't know, it just doesn't quite, do you have a thought why it doesn't work? I actually like it a lot. Do you? But you know what I like it for? Not so much to hang on a wall, uh -huh. but to like to put on the foot of the bed in a guest room. Oh. Something where it's another layer and that's a good idea. not necessarily use it, but I think it's it's beautiful, but it wouldn't necessarily make the big statement in a room on the wall. Mm -hmm. And you know, another problem with it here is I quilted it, I brought it home to Montana and quilted it in Montana. I've never seen it in Hawaii. I'm so influenced by where I am that if I took this to Hawaii with me, perhaps it would seem appropriate again. Uh -huh. Yeah, and the thing that, I don't know, might be part of it is just that the colors are so like, there's a big block of bright yellow, then a big block of bright blue, and then a big block of bright pink. Uh-huh. And, and these two aren't really that different again in terms of value. Yeah, and so it's it's like a more of a similar color together, but they're still like very much like bright. Uh-huh. So I was trying to do a sort of a Amish thing with a Hawaiian kind of colors, but anyway. There it is. So this this quilt, the part that turned out best was the back, which I assembled in a pretty short time. Yeah, this is all uh, wool uh, that came from Pendleton that they use for sampling colors, etc. And I, I'm gonna hold it up like this. I like it better than the front. This was the first quilt I made out of garments. First I cut up shirts and jeans and did these nine patches with them. But I decided for the edge that I wanted to use <laughs> jeans. 
and I think I'm the only one who likes this, but it's kind of cool on the bed. I tried quilting this and it's too loosey-goosey to quilt well. So this is, and I don't think I want in the future to mix Wrangler with Levi's. They just don't go together. But um, most of these are Wranglers. Yeah, there's some Levi's. That meant something in my age group. One meant you were a cowboy, the other meant you were a cow kid. But um, anyway, that was my first attempt at, and everybody went, huh? But, First thing I made after I took the class from Carol Lee Pollock. Here, let's try holding it up over on the other side. Where we just cut, and I think both of you took this class with me, did you? I did. Um, where we cut with scissors on our lap, trying to imitate the G spin. We haven't talked about G spin yet, but anyway, this incorporates a whole bunch of garments. I call this behind the screen door. And examples, when I cut up the garments earlier, this for example is a belt, what do you call it, loop? In front of a jacket. Um, this is a Pendleton shirt. I couldn't figure out how to finish it, so I had this fleece in my closet that I cut up. So it's just fleece. And, and because it had all been cut out randomly, it was very lumpy. And this fabric here from a blouse was very lumpy. So I don't know if you can tell, but I really quilted it a lot. I nailed it down. I felt like I was using one of those nail guns. Do you have any questions about this? I like the screen door. It wasn't, of course, in you have to name things after you make them because you don't know what they are until then. 2000 or 2001, I had started using garments. The jean thing I just showed you was from that. And I went to visit my daughter in New York City and she said, Mom, there's this quilt show at the Whitney that I think you might be interested in. And it was the G's Band quilt. I was very influenced by them. And that's why I wanted to learn to not be regular in my cutting, to quit using a rotary cutter. And then this is the piece that I like the best. I showed it to a woman the other day. She says it doesn't speak to me. But this is a jacket that I, when I retired, I uh, retired all of my jackets as well. And um, this was, I called, this is such a pretty jacket. I just loved the fabric. And then did a little <laughs> bit of quilting with leftover pants and so on. Obviously, there was a lot I didn't use. I'm getting way better at throwing away the extras because you can just get overwhelmed. This is a traditional thing I tried, cutting up wool jackets. I thought, now I need to do things the right way, the way you're supposed to do them. So I started this and it was a quilt that was supposed to go out like this and I, I just couldn't take it past this point. Uh, but. For one thing, I was trying to be traditional, but I was using an extremely heavy wool um, fabric from a jacket I had that I cut up. Well, you know, on these little pieces that it, it was hard to use. And then this is all from a shirt that I'd made for my husband years ago. Nobody wears wool anymore. I think this is nice, it's pretty, but I found it very boring very fast. This is something that I started putting together about three years ago and then threw it in the corner. So I ended up calling it, got it left in the sun all winter because it faded this. But then this summer I brought it back out from the corner when I was working on all those UFOs. And um, this is a, a wool shirt in a cotton shirt. And you can see again, the plackets incorporated. I free quilted this on my long arm machine as opposed to the hand quilting you just saw. And it got to be shown in a museum this summer. This is all from Coates, heavy um, red wool and black. The black was actually a 
a much lighter weight than the other two. And I did this with English paper piecing, which means that you take a shape like this in paper, baste it to the paper, take a piece of this fabric, cut it out, baste it to the paper under the edges, and then sew all of those together, then take the paper out. It was fun to do. I, it was an evolution of, I had the edges out like this at first. I've been very disappointed in this and wish that I, now that I had used off-white instead of that tweed. But um, Olivia does make it a little more fun. <laughs> this is almost entirely garments of my mother's, not and my own, but largely my mother. Um, this is a vest that I, that somebody asked me, did you embroider that? No, I didn't. But um, I got this fabric from a giveaway clothing thing. But the silks and the, um, there's quite a bit of silk in this and, and so on, are from my mother's garment. She passed away in 11. And so I just kept starting from the middle. It's like the strip piecing that I talked about before, where I started with this in the middle, then added, then added, and just kept adding until I decided that I'd added it clear to the edge. And then decided that all of these were too blah, so started putting sayings that one or the other, that are important to both of us. Wabi-sabi, huckleberries, different kinds of wildflowers are on here. Um, I thought that it was funny, but nobody gets it except me. Grizzly cats and bears. Oh my! Coyotes, wolves, and lynx. Oh my! I'm the only one who gets that joke. And, um, yeah, it ain't the cards for dealt, it's how you play the game. Things like that are all over it. And, um, it, it does speak, even though they aren't all my mother's clothes, it's, it's a look about it that makes me think of my mother. Any questions about this? No, but I like when life gives you scraps, make quilts. Yes, I love that too. <laughs> I love that too. This, again, was another failed wall hanging that I made pop holders out of, and this is the last one that's left. So you can just, you know, when something's failed. There's things, too, that should just go in the garbage. <laughs> it's hard to reach that point, but... This is two shirts and a skirt. I got this at a, the, the thrift shop rejects. So this cost me about 75 cents. Again, I had to throw away um, a lot of fabric. Tell myself, don't save this. Um, I still have a lot more of the skirt fabric, which as you can tell, I didn't use a lot of it. But these two, they were all um, Asian jackets from Asia. This is uh, a shirt, as you can tell, here's the pocket, and, um, and a swim trunks that I got at a, the Salvation Army in Hawaii. And I found the shirt first, and see it already had all of this kind of piecing on it. So, I thought, well, that's great, but it's going to need a little life. So I bought the orange. This has been cut into blocks, and then somehow I added the orange, and I don't remember quite what kind of rules I used for myself. But then after that, I quilted it, and I have learned by hand. I have learned that I want to do an outline like this, sort of and maybe in a couple places, and then just fill in. I learned on this piece not to fill in first, if that makes sense. Just do the outline of your wave or whatever it is you're thinking, wind or whatever it is you're thinking, and then fill it in. Is that because of the design that you get in the end, or is it because the fabric bunching It was because of the design that I got in the end, because sometimes if I hadn't done that, then I got myself into a corner where maybe there wasn't anything interesting to happen. So when I, I've learned, I've done several of these since, 
they've all been given away. If you go in the circle first and do this and go, oh, that isn't right, it's nothing to pull out one mm -hmm. string or one, um, one strand. Thank you. And redo it in a way that you like better. But if you've done a whole section as this has been done, you really aren't very anxious to pull it all out. And anyway, that's the hint I have on that. This is just another one that is okay. Um, I still am kind of working on it actually to figure out how to make it better. It has a dry tank cleaning tag that I left on it. Um, um, a pair of Patagonia shorts and a jumper. I don't know if you remember in the late 90s there were jumpers for the thing. And um, so I cut it up and these are pants, and that's what I got out of that. These are leftovers from the other projects. Um, and I, I like this hanging this way on our red wall I have downstairs. Do you see any of this detail, Maddie? Uh, not. Not very much. well. Yeah, okay. It's just the color. It's, yep. <laughs> this was really difficult to make, but um, these are all um, khakis and jeans. And these are the color, I call this April in Montana because this is pretty much the color in Montana. I tried to use a pattern for this out of a K facet book. Uh, I did some piecing and Cut these out exactly from a template. <sighs> I guess it turned out pretty good in the end, but it was not fun for me to make because of using templates. Um, but then I went back and did a little bit of zigzagging over little pieces of silk, and there was a shirt that I thought went with the, the grays and the sage and the blue. And I did have a Levi tag up here and thought it needed more red, so put little pieces of red, went back again. It's much like that one that I did with the sun and kind of how I went back and just put stuff on it. Um, oh, and then used the bottom of jeans, pieced a bunch of bottoms of jeans for the binding. Any questions about this? I was hoping you would mention this. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. This is the one, remember, when we were looking at it? Can we hold it up and, Maddie, can you see if you can figure out a way to shoot it? What if we Maybe go, over, go here? over here? Yeah. Can you, do you think you can get it? Yeah. Uh, because Susie thought it was really boring, and I thought from a distance hanging, it actually isn't boring. Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty awesome. Yeah, it's to look like mountains and mountains, and I think that you get that. Yeah. I didn't want to add too much red into it because then it wouldn't be April in Montana. <laughs> Tried to make something out of car hearts. What? Hey, um, that car heart, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, the, the garments that um, all the carpenters and outdoor workers use in this part of the country. See, car heart. <laughs> it's very thick. Were your fingers sore when you Yeah, I, I had a horrible time getting anything through it. it. You know, my fingers were all worn out, and here's where you hang a hammer and so on. I, I, I need to work on this more. I have a whole basket of car hearts in the garage to work on, but this is kind of one that didn't work, and I'm not really sure. Let me see, this is supposed to be the top why exactly but this is a, a skirt and shirt and um, this as you can see is the uh, a fleece again that I cut up used the zipper this is one that has never been finished a friend of mine had a, a suit that had all of this on it. Not quite enough contrast, is it? I think it has plenty of contrast. I think it does. Well, you guys are my friends. I, <laughs> I showed this to somebody and she said, 
What would you do with it? <laughs> What's that have to do with anything? <laughs> this I made at the end of a class, well, or at the end of a retreat thing. I just wanted to do something. So I cut these up and I had this wool and I had this stuff and, and then I have quilted it since. And this is cut out of a, what do you call those, sarongs? It's an yeah. And then this is one of those random piece things again that I just put together because it's so much fun to do. I don't care. It was just, it, it's, now see this is from a pair of swim trunks that I keep hoarding because I love that Volkswagen so much. An example of how I need to use some fabrics that I need to keep safe. This is something I just did. This is a piece of metal off of the path that I walked by my house. Then these guys were jeans that, before they were selling jeans with huge holes in them, now it doesn't look very interesting because now you can buy them anywhere. But at that time, I thought they were kind of cute. And so I put this fabric behind them and then did this quilting. Um, Do you hang these up together? Do you consider this a piece or are they separate pieces? Um, I have hung them together, yes. I, yes, I have done it that way. When I made them, I just kind of kept playing with them. Are there any fabrics that you will not use? Did you stay away from or avoid? Yeah, so far at least I've avoided chiffon or any of those real drapey ones and knits pretty much other than fleece. I, thus far, but I guess you never know what's in the future. Mm -hmm. But those real drapey ones haven't interested me yet. I wonder if there's any fabrics that just ooh, make your skin crawl. Oh, in that way. Yeah, cheap knits do. Uh-huh. But it, you know, one needs to get over that sometimes, too. Right. There's probably a place for cheap knits. One summer, I was spent six weeks taking care of my little granddaughter in a dorm in Milwaukee. So I took a shopping bag of fabrics that I really liked that I kept not using because I liked them so much, and some fabrics I really didn't like at all that had been given to me. And that was, I was only allowed to sew out of that bag. And in six weeks, I did not finish. I had made this and I didn't have that on there. So I realized I needed to add that when I woke up and saw it in the dawn. That really helps a lot. This is a shirt that I just really had liked. And so I just, made these strips like this and then put them together and I'm still quilting it but um, I ended up really liking it. It's kind of like a Christmas with a twist thing, I think. But these were the colors that by themselves and then this is the last thing I have to show you. So the last week I had the dregs left and decided again to challenge myself with the values. And so just my only criteria for putting this together was a light and dark, light and dark, light and dark. You get my point. This fabric in particular, I really didn't like. It, it's a gray green. That Antique. Are, yeah, I don't even know why anybody made it. And, and this too, you know, it's just, it was just awful. This, I just thought was terrible. And, but when I did it this way, I think they turned out to be quite stunning colors this way. And I like this a lot in the end. And again, I practiced on this for learning to do my long arm quilting, but I like this piece. Yeah, me too. That's all folks, there you go. How long have you been quilting? Um. 98. Yeah. This is an odd combination. I'm just gonna put it out there in case it was not obvious. Just 
Like pancakes no. and wine. That's why it took me so long to figure out that I could put it in here. Yeah, like pancakes and wine, that's exactly right. At first it seems like they don't go together. It just beats, I, I will never quilt a quilt on a home machine ever again. <laughs> ever. <laughs> but you can't take this on the boat in Hawaii? No, it doesn't fit and um, so I have to do it here. You know? On your table that's... She showed us a quilt and she said it was that size because that's the size of the table on the boat. <laughs> I, I think I'm going to just stick with making small things this winter. I don't know. I'm, that That's a dilemma, the space on the boat. Yeah. Thanks, you guys. Well, thank you.